today I'm going to show you guys how to hook up a sewage ejector pump. Um, here's the pump right here. Um, this happens to be a new installation that I'm going to be doing down here in my uh, basement bathroom. Um, but you could apply this video to um, an existing installation where you have to replace the pump. It's essentially the same process. Um, so just follow the steps and you can easily do this yourself and save yourself some money and not have to hire a professional. Okay, so let's get started here. This is obviously the, the basin in the ground. If you're dealing with an existing installation where you want to change your pump out, the pump went bad, you're also going to see at this point two pieces of pipe coming in and out of these holes. One's a vent, one's the actual discharge from the pump. All right. Um, if there is no means to disconnect this right around here with a clamp and a check valve, what you're going to have to go ahead and do is just cut these two sections of pipe. It's not a big deal. You can couple them all back together later on. And what that will allow you to do is then you can take out the bolts holding the cover down and you can pull the cover off. Like I said, mine's a new install so nothing's hooked up yet. Once you're looking down in here, uh, I believe this is a 30 inch deep pit. There's obviously the inlet inlet pipe from underneath the slab and uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to install the pump down in here we're going to have to pipe the pump up and I'm going to show you how to do that now so I just want to give you guys a closer look at the pump here here's the discharge you're going to need a two inch threaded male adapter that will transition from threaded to slip fitting for PVC that just gets threaded down in there. You don't need Teflon tape or pipe dope or anything on there. This is a flooded connection down in the pit. It doesn't matter if it leaks a little bit. Um, just a little item of note. If you're going to be replacing your pump and you pop this cover off and you see it topped off of sewage in here, which is probably going to be the case if you're replacing it, um, to get that water out, you could try a little trick. It might work. What happens a lot of times with these pumps is here's the float switch. All right, and over time, debris, toilet paper, hair, and all sorts of other stuff gets wrapped around this. And what happens is it weighs it down, and when the water level rises, it doesn't allow the float to rise up and down anymore. So it gets stuck in the downward position, the pump doesn't come on. On the cord, if you have this type of pump, there's two plugs. This part here is the pump, this part here is the float switch. What you could do is you can unplug this portion of the plug and then plug this section right into the wall and what that will do is give you constant power to the pump. Now if it's the float switch that's the problem, what will happen is the pump will kick on, it will pump all the water out of the pit and then you can get in there and do your work. Now there's a lot of pumps that don't have this type of setup. Some of them have an a integrated float switch on here that you know all the wiring is down in the pump so that's not going to work for you. But you could take a quick peek obviously without having to even start your job and see if you have this. And if you do, you're in luck and you could try it. And like I said, maybe you get lucky and it's just a float switch that's your problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, like I said, I'm going to attach this fitting on here. Now we're going to have to cut a section of PVC to get us from the bottom of the pit, out of the pit, to the top portion here. And we want to stick out of the top of the pit about two inches. And uh, what that's going to allow us to do is connect our check valve and continue our plumbing up. And I have to get my pipe up to this section here. That's the connection to my uh, sewage main that goes in around this wall here. So uh, let's get to doing that now. So I went ahead and got the pump lowered down in the pit. I have our threaded connection on there. I got a section of PVC pipe, two inch pipe, uh, primed and glued into that fitting. Uh, just one tip when placing the pump down here. Uh, what you want to do is keep the pump as far away as possible from the inlet. So the four inch pipe here being where all the sewage water from the bathroom is coming into the pit. It's going to drop straight down in this area here. There's really no pressure when this is coming in. So it's going to essentially as soon as it comes out of the pipe it's going to drop vertically down. And the idea is to keep the float switch as far away as possible from that. So what I did is I had the pump pretty much over on this side of the basin. And uh, again I got the pipe attached and the only real thing you got to check is to make sure when you put your lid on that your bolt holes, I don't know if you can see that down in there, but you got four bolts that bolt the cover down. You got to make sure that the, the pump and the pipe coming out lines up with one of these two holes in the top. It doesn't matter which one you use, 
Uh, I'm coming up this one obviously because I got the pump on this side away from the inlet again which is over on this side. The other hole is for the vent pipe. Uh, the vent pipe sticks down into the basin about three inches not any further it's just the vent the sewer gas is out of this and uh, mine connects right up there I got that all roughed in. Uh, you can check out one of my other videos I have a video of how I roughed in the basement plumbing for the bathroom down here. Alright so it's just a vertical piece of pipe that I got to connect for that and uh, we're going to get the cover on now. I'll show you some tricks how to do that, how to seal it so your basement doesn't smell. And uh, uh, that'll bring us up to the next step. Alright, so with the lid kit, you get a couple things. You get a gasket. They give you bolts to bolt this down. Um, you also get a grommet that fits into the, the lid. Um, that's where the cords come out. I'll show you how to install it in a few and you also get two grommets for where the pipes come up through the lid. With this gasket, what you want to do, it's double stick tape. You obviously just rip the back of it off and you're going to put this all around the inner lip of the basin. Okay, I like doing it here. Some guys put it out here. I like doing it here. That way I'm sure that it's getting sealed. Um, so he's going to run that all around. Make sure it's nice and clean before you do this so it sticks well. I'm going to go ahead and put that on. One other quick note, what I also like to do, the two cords coming up from the pump and the one from the float, I like to just throw a zip tie onto the pipe to make sure they don't sag and fall in and uh, interfere with the operation of the float. So I just loosely you know, bring them up and then just cinch this thing pretty tight so it holds it there. And then we'll bring those up through the lid. Alright, so as you can see I went ahead and got the uh, gasket installed all along the inner lip of the tank. It's on there real well. Uh, if you're going to be replacing your pump, it might be a good idea to scrape the old gasket off and just get yourself a new package of gasket material from Home Depot or Lowe's. They sell it in the hardware aisle. It's just standard weather stripping with the self-back adhesive. And uh, seal that up real good. This is the only thing, besides from the lid, that prevents sewer gases from escaping out of this basin into your house. On the lid, you're going to be installing these gaskets and these also prevent, uh, like I said, the gases from escaping. Alright, so I'll show you how to install all these next. I'm going to go ahead and get the lid, put on the tank, and I'll be right back. Alright, as you can see, I went ahead and got the lid installed on the tank. I didn't screw it down yet, it's just laying on there. Because we got to do our next step here now, which is install the grommets around the... Yeah, cords and the pipes. Alright, here's the electrical cord grommet. It's got two holes. It's split on each end so you can slip the cords through. Uh, it's a little tricky to get on here sometimes. Just got to work the cord through. It'll eventually go through there. Same thing for the other side. Okay, once you get them both on there slide it down, pull the cords up fairly tight, you don't want a lot of slack down in the tank and just pop it down. Uh, the grommet's grooved so it'll slip into the um, around the hole on the lid. Here's one of the donut gaskets for the pipe. Okay, all you do with this is it slides right down the top of the pipe. Again, it's grooved. So when you slip it down, push it in nice and tight onto the lid and that's it. We're going to have to do the same thing for this hole with the vent pipe. I'll do that in a, when we get up to that point. Uh, what we're going to do now is we'll put the bolts onto the lid. I'll secure it down. Alright, next step we're going to secure the uh, lid down to the base. Uh, here's the hardware pack to give you for this. It's got four bolts and four washers. Uh, four holes in the lid there. They thread down into these threaded slots in the actual basin. Uh, before you do that, you want to get yourself some anti-seize lubricant and just coat the uh, the bolts before you put them in there. This will prevent them from rusting and getting stuck in the top of this. Uh, I've changed a bunch of pumps uh, in the past where these things get rusted and corroded, stuck in there. You go ahead and start threading them out. Um, they break, they strip, and then, uh, then you have a bigger problem. So put some of this on there and this will prevent that from ever happening. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get this secured and we'll be ready to move on to the plumbing uh, up top here.
All right, guys, I got the uh, the lid bolted down. Uh, next step here, we're going to start our plumbing off the top of our pump. The next piece you're going to be installing is your check valve, all right, which is right here. All right, this is just a uh, standard check valve. I sell this in Home Depot with the pumps down the plumbing aisle. Um, what this does, uh, just it's a uh, gasket fitting with clamps that just slides right down over the top of this tight and you cinch these two clamps down and then the top of this you know once you get this attached this is where your plumbing continues what we're going to install on top of this is a ball valve as you can see here uh, and what this will allow you to do is that if you ever have to get uh, into here again to change the pump out uh, what the check valve is essentially doing, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know, it stops the waste once the pump kicks on. The pump is going to pump all the waste up and into the sewage main. What this does is a flapper in here. The flapper closes and prevents all that waste water from draining back down into the tank. All right. So when you go to swap this out someday, this serves as a disconnect point to get the pump out. When you go to disconnect this, especially when you take the top of the take the top pipe off. There's going to be all wastewater in there and it's going to just flow a big, big mess down here. Anything in the pipe is going to drain right out. What this will do is you put this here, you can shut this off and you can shut all the waste off above the check valve. It's just a good idea to put in. It's actually code in a lot of areas, but uh, you know, 10 bucks, I highly recommend you put one of these in. It'll, it'll prevent the big mess if you, like I said, you ever have to go in there and change the pump out. One other quick note about these check valves. Uh, as you see here on the bottom, uh, it says it must be installed horizontally. Um, the reason they put that on there is that they're afraid that you can see in there how that flapper works. They're afraid that the flapper is going to get jammed up with debris and uh, it's going to prevent it from closing if you install it vertically. It'll work vertically. It's just it requires more maintenance. You might have to take it apart every so often and just clean it out if you ever see a problem. Uh, really, I've always installed these vertically. I've never had a problem with them. General rule of thumb with the check valve anyway, you should probably replace this every five to six years just to be on the safe side if it ever stops working. As with the pump, uh, the pump, you can get 10 years out of a pump, so figure around eight years you should be looking to replace that. If you want to prevent the mess in your basement, this thing, water will get through this if the pump stops working and this thing fills. It's going to flood your basement. I recommend just changing the pump every eight years just to be on the safe side, okay? It'll, like I said, it'll prevent a, a big mess from occurring. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get this attached here. I'm going to put the ball valve above it with a short piece of PVC in between them. Um, really, at this point, I'll show you the rest of the install, but you're going to be on your own. Let's show the tripod here. You're really going to be on your own because this is where every setup is going to, is going to differ. Alright, I got my pipe. I got to bring it up and I got to tie it into that portion right there, uh, which goes out to my sewage main. Alright, again, my vent is up there right next to that light. That's just going to be a straight run right down into that hole. And that's it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and glue all these sections of pipe together. I don't think there's really any need to video this portion of, the, of this job. And um, I'll show you what the finished product looks like. So I just got done with the uh, remainder of the plumbing here uh, above the pit now. Um, I didn't think it was worthwhile filming this only because it's just a matter of cutting sections of pipe and finding a combination of fittings that work to get from uh, the outlet of your pump up to wherever your uh, sewer line may be. Um, so this is going to differ from installation to installation. Uh, one thing I didn't touch on before in regards to the check valve, uh, there will always be a direction of flow on the outside of the valve, okay? You have to make sure you install the check valve properly for it to work. So obviously uh, the sewage water is going to be pumped up and out, which is why I have the arrow facing upwards. Uh, now, pretty obvious here, but uh, it's an easy thing to forget or miss. All right, so really, all this is this is you know obviously the check valve here, but this also serves as a point of uh, disconnect in case you ever have to get into the pit to do any work. You don't have to cut the pipes out for this section. All you would do is just undo these clamps, and that whole piece comes apart. You can pull the cover up. Uh, you can actually pull the cover up on the vent pipe and just stash it away. You can get your hands in there to do your work. Uh, ball valve, as I stated before, install that as close as you can to the check valve. Again, normally this will be open. 
You'll close it if you ever have to take the check valve off. And what that'll do is that'll hold all the sewage water that is in this lateral piece of pipe from flowing out when you take everything apart. Alright, and that's really it. Only other thing of note, whenever you're dealing with piping on the output side of a pump, you want to limit the amount of 90 degree angles you have. So what I did was I used two 45s, one here and one up there to get a vertical again, just to angle that section of pipe. It, it relieves strain and the amount of push that the pump has to do to go around all those turns. Um, I did have to add an elbow here, but you know, one elbow in the system isn't going to kill it. This pump is capable of pumping 20 feet, so there's only about 6 feet here for where it has to pump to, so it's not a big deal. Uh, other than that, just obviously plug it in. Make sure you have uh, your float switch connected before your pump so it works properly. Again, the vent line. The vent line just sticks into the top of the cover about 2 or 3 inches. And that is tied into uh, the rest of my venting system, which is up here. Again, I have another video that shows the rough-in plumbing for this bathroom down here in my basement. And uh, I think that's about it. Now, if you got any questions, post them down below. I'll answer them the best I can. Hope you guys found this video informative. And thank you for watching.